Short answer, no. The people who should be going to jail and getting fined and shut down for stock market manipulation are the damn bastards who caused all this crap to happen. I don't care if it's the clearinghouse, a brokerage, I don't give a crap who it is. Fix the system because the system's rigged. Now, I'm gonna get the pissed Kevin off and we're gonna talk about what actually goes into stock market manipulation so that we can understand is Wall Street bets or people using Wall Street bets even remotely exposed? Again, short answer, no. But let's take a look at the details. Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Will Wall Street bets face charges for stock market manipulation? In this video, I'm going to break down the details of stock market manipulation and the dangers for Wall Street bets, specifically its users, since Wall Street bets could be deemed a platform. And we'll also look at what the SEC looks for and does when there is possible stock market manipulation. Will Wall Street bets be found guilty of stock market manipulation and do you need to be worried? Well, to understand this, the easiest way to begin is by looking at what the SEC looks for in terms of stock market manipulation. That is, what is the what are the different types of stock market manipulation that exist? And what I want you to know is I'm not declaring that Wall Street bets is a stock market manipulator, but I want you to see what the SEC looks for in stock market manipulators, and then you can make your own decision. And I'm going to give you a lot of burdens of proof that have to be overcome to determine that someone or platform or whatever is a stock market manipulator. The first type of potential stock market manipulator is a category one stock market manipulator. And that is a pump and a dumper. Somebody who basically finds a generally small cap stock, which GameStop was, pumps the price up with a lot of hype. And then when that hype gets to peak hype, the pumper sells the stock, takes profits at the top, and everybody else is left holding the bag. The SEC, or in their words, they say insiders or promoters obtain ownership or control of a significant uh, block of stock. Then they hype the stock to the public to generate artificial interest in a stock and cause the price to rise. After they cause the price to rise, they end up dumping the stock, which you can see here under the time to sell slide. Once the manipulators have been successful in driving up the price of the company's stock through these various means, they will dump the stock or sell their shares to the unsuspecting public and walk away with profits. Investors are often left holding the bag. Now, the SEC, and this is where things get a little bit more complicated, the SEC has multiple definitions for what promoters are. See, a lot of people on Wall Street Bets might just be posting their opinions about a stock. That doesn't make them an insider, but it could potentially make them a promoter. This gets complicated because there are multiple definitions of a promoter. A promoter, uh, specifically regarding, or according to the SEC, is any person who takes an initiative in founding or organizing a business, which many people posting on Wall Street Bets are not. But promoters can also be paid promoters, people who got paid to pump up a stock and then they don't disclose that they got paid. So that is, they might say, GameStop to the moon, this is a bargain, a must buy, a hot buy, and they were actually paid to say that. So if you are an insider, you are potentially at risk of being deemed a stock market manipulator. If you are a paid promoter, you are potentially at risk of being deemed a stock market manipulator by pumping a stock. However, what if you are a not paid promoter, you're somebody hyping a stock, and you are not an insider? Well, you could still be deemed to be orchestrating a pump and dump. To see this, you don't have to look very far, but we're going to look at some additional burdens of stock market manipulation with pump and dumps. And that is, what are the actual criteria to be deemed a pump and dumper? I'm going to go through that, but first, let me quickly just mention that SEC specifically points out that websites can be used to manipulate stocks, but not only can websites be used, message boards, social media, and chat, room is, uh, chat rooms can be used to manipulate stocks. And that ultimately, a lot of the pumping can be traced back to manipulators. So I want to highlight that and make it very clear is that the SEC will try to link any kind of pumping back to an original set of manipulators. Uh, and, and those are potentially people who are going to be at risk. But again, what are people on the internet or what are requirements for the SEC to say you're an unpaid promoter who's not an insider who might be subject to be de being deemed a pump 
and potentially Dumper. Now, technically, we haven't really seen the dump yet at uh, stocks like GameStop or AMC, but that could change any day. Nobody knows. So the point of this video is just to prepare you for what the SEC is going to look for. So what is the SEC going to do? Well, the SEC, one of the first things they're going to do is they're going to try to find out, are you an insider? We know that, and many of you are not going to be an insider. They could sub subpoena many financial records from you or your broker to find out. And by the way, website or brokerages like Robinhood have already been subpoenaed. So the SEC can subpoena information to find out what kind of links you might have and to see who might be an insider that's being involved or is involved with these. Uh, additionally, uh, what the SEC will do is they're going to try to track down message board postings and emails back to their original source. The SEC says they could subpoena internet service providers to not necessarily get the content of email, but to get identifying information on individuals. They can get IP addresses, for example, and they can find out, oh, look, we've got a poster here with four different usernames, but all with the same IP address created around the same time and the same day or same period of time in general. These could be ways that the SEC will start building their information to find out, okay, who are the key potential manipulators? Are they insiders? Were they paid? And if they were not paid, which again, my guess is that most people watching this video are not insiders and were not paid. Well, what's the next thing? The SEC is going to try to find out, are you using the internet to spread false information? Were you spreading false information? And that is going to become a big key because see, what we can learn from this SEC pamphlet here is that hyping a stock using social media is a classic characteristic of a pump and dump. It doesn't mean that what's happening at Wall Street Bet is a pump and dump, but using social media for a pump and dump is a very common uh, criteria or, or a common occurrence, right? That happens frequently. But does that make people legally culpable for stock market manipulation just because they posted their opinions on a message board that were very bullish about GameStop or AMC because we think those are going to the moon? Well, to help us with this, it's really helpful to look at case law. And now these, what I'm about to say are just opinions, but I'm going to show you some actual case law. So all of this is for entertainment purposes only. And of course you should make your own conclusions. I can't offer free legal services because I'm just some random dude on YouTube with a level 99 fire making mug. And honestly, there's nothing to indicate that this mug even requires level 99 fire making. I might not even have level 99 fire making. So keep those things in mind. Let's go ahead and look at some legal burdens that the SEC is going to be looking for to prove that people who maybe are not insiders and uh, are not paid promoters could be liable for stock market manipulation. So we got to keep watching here. Okay, so here is an opinion uh, or, or a, uh, we're going to look at this here. This is actually a case. It's the Security Exchange Commission versus Honig. Uh, the SEC here describes a pump and dump scheme as a scheme where an investor's clandestinely purchase a large share of thinly traded public company uh, at a low price and then collude amongst themselves or with others to pump the price through intra-group trading and then dump the now pricey shares to new investors. Now, a key word here is that the SEC says that there would have to be some form of collusion. Collusion is deceptive. Now, obviously, Wall Street Bets is not a private place. It is a pretty blatantly public place. So maybe we don't necessarily need this communication to be clandestine, but there should be some way for the SEC to say, hey, if we're going to deem somebody as a manipulator, a stock market manipulator, there would probably have to be some intent to collude or deceive and defraud people. That is a burden. Write that down. If you're worried about this, write that down. Anybody who would be deemed a stock market manipulator would probably have to be deemed someone who is deceiving others on purpose. Let's go to another case here. Uh, here is uh, another example where the SEC says that fraudsters typically spread false or misleading information to create a frenzy that will pump a stock. And so this is another burden. So what do we have so far? We've got the burden that you probably would have to be coming across as deceptive by spreading false or misleading information. 
So then the question becomes, are you spreading false or misleading information? Let's look at some more examples. Here's the United States versus Weed. Richard Weed, a securities lawyer, wrote false opinion letters so that his two co-conspirators could sell stock to the public in a pump and dump scheme. In connection with this conduct, he was convicted of securities fraud, wire fraud, and conspiracy to commit both. However, after this, it was determined that generally in a pump and dump scheme, information is usually false. Again, reiterating that to be probably deemed a pump and dumper, there would have to be some false information related to that pump and dump. In the case of the Security Exchange Commission versus Zenergy International Incorporated, she wrote fraudulent opinion letters, permitted others to write such letters in her name, and ghost wrote opinion letters in another attorney's name. Again, look at the keyword here, fraudulent opinion letters. The letters were here, look at this, materially false. Those are big burdens. That is the SEC for these cases is saying we had to prove or courts had to prove that somebody was making materially false statements. Materially false means it wasn't a mistake. You had the intent to deceive, collude, and make materially false statements. Here's another one. Look at this. Rule 10B-5, willfully and with the intent to defraud. These are really big burdens so far. Uh, let's go to another one here. Here's another one. In the case of, uh, or here in, in this definition of elements of conspiracy, that in order to determine that somebody's conspiring to commit a pump and dump or to collude, to be colluding, uh, for you to be determined someone who's colluding, you would have to be proven to be somebody who is acting with the specific intent to commit a pump and dump scheme. These are big, big regulatory or legal burdens here. Uh, now, let's go ahead and, and try to tie this together and understand a little bit more. So the first legal burden, is, and, and probably one of the biggest legal burdens here to really be deemed a stock market manipulator as an individual or a platform, is that you would have to spread false information. The easiest way to defend a claim that you've made false statements is to say that your statement was an opinion. For example, if I said I work for GameStop and I know that GameStop is going to issue stock tomorrow at 10 a.m. and they are going to issue 10 million new shares. It's happening on February 1st. I know it's happening. That would be a very bad thing to say because first, the statement is false. I don't know that. And I am also stating a falsehood. I do not work for GameStop. That's bad. That would be really bad. That would potentially be a way of stating materially false information. Very, very bad. Now, if I said something instead like, hey guys, look, I think there's a good chance GameStop could issue 10 million new shares on February 1st, uh, you know, just because the stock has gone up so much, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me for GameStop to go in on Monday morning and go, dude, let's just raise some capital. But that's just my opinion, but it could happen. Now, in that case, it should be deemed that my speech was an opinion. Now, I don't know, I can't guarantee that, but I think a reasonable person would listen to that and say, no, he's just giving his opinion. He's not stating material falsehoods because he's not stating material information. He's stating an opinion. So if you gotta, anytime you're thinking about this law stuff, ask yourself this, if a jury listened to those two statements, which of those do you think a jury would think was an opinion? And which do you think a jury would think was fact? And that's what makes law so fascinating is you don't always know what a jury or a judge is going to think. Sometimes you think the law is on your side, but people interpret the laws in many different ways. But again, since I'm not attorney, an attorney, this is just an opinion. See what I did there? Now, considering Wall Street Bets, Wall Street Bets is a platform. So it's going to be hard, I think, for the SEC or any regulators or, or even, uh, you know, lawyers to make the allegation that Wall Street Bets is promoting false information because Wall Street Bets is a platform. So instead, the SEC or lawyers would have to identify individual people who spread false information. So if somebody, if you are a poster and you post false information, you ought to potentially be very careful. Or if you're posting on Wall Street Bets, you wanna make it very clear that what you're sharing is an opinion. And again, this is not legal advice, this is my opinion. Now, I believe that the vast majority of content that I've read on Wall Street Bets, for example, which I love Wall Street Bets, it's a brilliant community, and sure, there are some knuckleheads on there, but every community's got some knuckleheads, and I honestly have come to love the knuckleheads because as, you know, the, the more knuckleheads sometimes we get, the more entertaining things are, and it's a whole lot better than going into the frickin' Bloomberg terminal and, ooh, we have a secondary offering coming, hmm, 
yeah, it's it's much more fun on Wall Street Bets. But look, the majority of the content I read on Wall Street Bets is clearly theory crafting and opinion sharing by individuals. And if people state a fact, they often share their citations, which I think is so amazing. To me, that really protects Wall Street Bets uh, from you know being cited or shut down because it's a platform, it's not an individual, but it puts individuals at risk if they are making statements that appear like a fact, but that are false. Now, the second big defense for anyone worried about stock market manipulation is that it seems like lawyers and regulators would have to prove that you not only made false statements, but that you also had the specific intent to defraud other people and collude or conspire with others. Usually that conspiring is done in secret, but it doesn't have to be clandestine. To me, Wall Street Bets is too transparent to say that anything at Wall Street Bets is clandestine, but it is possible that somebody could be posting false information with the specific intent to defraud other people on Wall Street Bets. So that is a possibility. Now, personally, I believe that the suits going on TV who are shorting the market while at the same time saying that everyone should sell because the market is going to crash and we need 30 days to slow the spread and just lock everything down while at the same time shorting the market, not to mention any names, <coughs> Bill Ackman. That, to me, that seems much more... Well, I'm not going to use the word, but that seems much more wrong than anyone posting their opinions on Wall Street Bets. But again, there, there are some serious burdens here to overcome. Collusion, materially false information, the intent to deceive. Those are big, big, big burdens to overcome to say that Wall Street Bets is at all manipulating stock. Now, do I think that Wall Street Bets is at risk of citation after all of what I've just explained? No. Now, I, again, I personally do not believe that Wall Street Bets is at risk of any kind of stock market manipulation, even claims, because they're a platform. Individuals, you might want to be careful based on what I've outlined in this video. And if you found this as helpful as I found it when I researched it, please consider sharing the video. And folks, we'll see you in the next one.